You are now listening to the Business Banter Podcast, where top minds in business collide and wisdom is exposed. My name is Jack Kozakowski. I'll be your host for the day. My passion for this podcast is that you walk away better personally and professionally from the amazing stories that are told. Now let's get ready to banter. Super excited for episode seven of the Business Banter Podcast. So today I have a really special guest because it is actually the guy who helped me start the US division of the creation agency and is my business partner, but he's taken on a new adventure as the CMO of one of this new emerging plat- social platforms for the blockchain. And he is one of the smartest guys in marketing and sales that I know. He works with Fortune 500 companies like Samsung, Google, HP. I mean, if you name it, IBM, he's worked for them. He's Our, our agencies work for them. Um, we've done tons of big enterprise campaigns. And what I want to talk about today with him is what does the future of social media look like for digital agencies? But what does the future of social media look like for everyone? You know, w- there's so much going on right now that's so noisy. So I want to hear Jason's take on this. He's got some really good insight. I think you're going to love this one. So let's get ready to banter. All right. Super stoked today. I have my good pal and I guess business partner. We we were pals and business partners at the same time. Um, Pals first, Jack. Pals first. Pals first, even though he's a Man U fan. Um, But anyways, he's uh, (laughs) the founder of Creation Agency. So this wonderful agency that I help run. He was the guy that was the brains behind it. But even more importantly, as he's also um, kind of transitioned roles too into the CMO of a company called Howdo. And we'll get into that a little bit later. So Jason, give a little, uh, give me like 20 seconds of who you are and why, why you're cool. Why I'm cool. Well, I'm a Man U <laughs> fan. Uh, I am a snowboarder. Uh, my favorite <laughs> toy is my one wheel, which I use to commute to work. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go Google it. Uh, I have a beautiful wife and two lovely little boys. But more importantly, I've kind of uh, been 20 years working in marketing, mostly with very large brands. So yep. very, very fortunate to have amazing clients. And if any clients are listening, thank you. I appreciate you all. You are amazing. But just let us test and measure. And, you know, it's the, the last 20 years has been crazy in marketing. It really has because we've had the birth of digital marketing, the birth of email marketing, the birth of web marketing, the birth of social marketing. It's been an incredibly exciting 20 years. So um, yeah, so that's, that's a brief background to me. So today, the main conversation that I want to hit on, uh, you know, we're going to hit on a lot of things about the future of social media. I think one of them is going to be the future of social media and what that looks like for digital agencies, just because I think that's relevant to not only us, but to anybody else out there listening that's looking to hire a, a digital agency. So um, Jason, you know, just to give my little in, intro to Jason is, you know, 15 years ago, was 15 or 16 years ago, you started Creation Agency. You, 17. 17, I know oh I look, my gosh. I know, I, it's because I look so young. That's what confuses <laughs> people. They're like, you couldn't, you didn't start the agency when you were five. Surely that seems crazy. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, 17 years ago. Crazy. And so... 17 years ago. And then I came on um, about four years ago, I think, wow, four years ago. And um, Jason was a customer at Acton. And then we kind of met over Twitter, which is a a whole different uh, segment. And then, uh, you know, he had me open up the US division of the creation agency. So I'm super blessed for that. One of the cool things is Jason's worked with Google, you know, works with Google, Samsung, IBM, major Fortune uh, 500 brands. And, uh, you know, that's really helped. He's helped me kind of grow. So what I want to talk about, though, is you know, today what what we're seeing is social media is getting a lot harder, right? As a digital agency, like it used to be kind of our competitive advantage to say, hey, let us run your social media, you know, let us run your, your email. And it used to be a lot easier because very few people had uh, implemented or had started using a marketing automation platform. Now everybody is, very few people were using social media, right? Now a lot of people are using social media, right? So what do you see um, from a digital, perspe- digital agency perspective and, and running a company that you essentially have to stay innovative, stay ahead of the curve and keep getting clients results as it just gets noisier and harder and harder because everybody else has adopted? What are you seeing that really is going to separate a, a, a really good agency from the others 
in the right so as long as this is just between you and me jack and we're not <laughs> going to share this with anybody else right so as long as nobody's listening so no but what you've just described is any maturing market right so you know and there's lots to that answer so let me try and articulate it as clearly as i can right so what you're describing is any marketing tactic that matures right the first people to ever put on an event right people would queue around the block because it would be a novelty what's happening at the event it's the only place we can see people right the first time we sent emails we would be getting like 50% open rates, you know, 25% click through rates. And email marketing was easy until everybody else started sending emails, right? And it, you know, social's kind of gone the way of every other marketing. Uh, search. So search used to be our go-to, right? So if you needed traffic for something, it's brilliant. It's bottom of the funnel. You know, who can help, you know, what's the best cloud services thing for, I mean, whatever they're searching for, right? Best washing machine, best phone, you know, somebody's out there looking for something. Search was the way to go. But like everything, the more people that enter the market, you know, so search is increasingly. I had a brilliant meeting with, with, with somebody yesterday where we did the analysis and we're not touching search because it's, there's so much competition for the, the, the search keywords. It's the, you know, it's the easiest way to get traffic. It becomes quite expensive. Now, you know, once you've got a handle on your, you know, AUP, your cost per acquisition and what your ROI model looks like, what your return is through the funnel, you know, when, when capturing somebody's name at the top, has exponentially increased. In the same issue, you know, getting their name is, getting their traffic is more expensive, but getting their conversion is harder, right? So what's happening at the top of the funnel is, it's more expensive to get people to come to your page and it's harder to convert them. So the two things that we have to focus on as an agency is A, how can we keep getting good qualified traffic at a low cost per eyeball, right? That's the number one priority. Anybody can go and pay, you know, five, six pound a click and get people coming from, from Google search, you know. Um, but when you work out that your conversion rate, what your conversion rate is, it can get incredibly expensive just to get somebody's name, let alone a commitment to buy. So it's these two things. It is how you can find new places where new people are, where no marketers are, to get people at a low cost to see your site, and then, what you can do to improve your conversion. Because of course, if your clicks are cost, if your cost per traffic is going up, but your conversion rate is going up at a higher rate, you're still winning. But what's happening with a lot of agencies, the cost is going up, but the conversion rate's going down. And I tell you, right, so people are sneaky. They don't want to give you their details. So we, you know, like one of the tactics we've been implementing with customers is search as a win back, right? And what I mean by that is you have an asset on a page. Our 65 page guide to solving all of your problems, right? You, you, you do your Facebook ads and your LinkedIn ads and you know, your Twitter ads, you do all of this stuff. Uh, you get people to come to your website, they look at it, they read what it's about, they take the title of the document and they go, I really want that, but I really don't want to give you my name because somebody out there is going to, you know, Jack's going to phone me, you know, try and book an appointment. So what they do is they take the name of the document, drop it straight into Google or any other popular search engine and see if they can get it somewhere where it's not behind a gate. And this is true behavior. So, so now at the basics, you've got to take your document name into your paid search and make sure that if anybody does that, they go to your landing page, they go search for it, you loop them back to your landing page and they go, oh, sucks, right? Yeah, okay, you know, um, uh, this is where I get it, I've got to give you my name. So it genuinely, it's a long answer to a short question, but it's those two things. It's keeping getting good traffic at a low cost at the top end, but in consistently trying to improve what your cost per conversion is because the combination of those two things give you the cost per name and then you're into the funnel right now we're nurturing and progression and, and all that kind of stuff but if you double your cost at the top your cost per sale at the bottom is exponentially larger because of all of your drop off and breakage as, as you go through your funnel what do you think about gated content so this is an argument that i you know it struggle with you know on the side of this side of the pond with our clients is you know as an agency we know that the standard form, you know, gated landing page with a form is getting tougher and tougher, right? You know, the conversion mm -hmm. rates are going down. Obviously, I think it always comes down to content. You and I will always agree that you know, most people just have crappy content. That's why they don't get <laughs> anybody to fill anything out. Um, yeah. But with that being yeah. said, you know, how do you see the future of that looking and, and how gated content will change? I mean, I, I, I had this exact same meeting with, um, interesting, the marketing team at Google Cloud this week, talking about content strategy and conversion and stuff. And this was one of the questions they asked. Um, had the same question last week from Salesforce. What do we do about gating? And you know, my, my honest view is that you should try and give away as much as you can, right? 
you know, and you know, right, I've got a whole shtick on reciprocity, right? This idea of, you know, the rider and the elephant and how do you educate, how do you move the elephant and stuff like that, right? And the most powerful human behavior is reciprocity. And it happens all the time, right? So, you know, every minute of the day, somebody opens a door for me, somebody says hello, you know, all of these little things all add up, right? I mean, my son was, um, it was his birthday recently. So, of course, we, we make a list, either mental or physical. It was physical, but we make a list of who bought him a birthday present. Now, that's not so we can go punish people that don't, but that's so when it's their child's birthday or something that we feel obliged to return the favor to the same kind of amount. So, so this reciprocity counter is happening in everybody's brains every minute of every day. You know, So I'm a firm believer that if you give away the good content, they'll come to you when they need help. Now, that can be hard when you're in a marketing company or an agency and you're tasked and you're measured on acquisition. So you've got to try and find that right balance. And I, I think it's about structuring your content, particularly in social, in a way that doesn't try and convert them on the first touch, right? And you, you really helped me with this, right? So you and I tell everybody about your you know, time to ask, you know, and that's kind of infected all our clients in, across Europe, right? Which is, you know, what's the right time to ask? for the appointment or to ask for their name. And it's never first. I mean, if you're Gary Vee, it's too right, because he's all about jab, jab, right hook. So he says, you know, give them something, give them something else, and then you come in with the ask. You know, it might be five touches till you ask, right? But I think we've got to be deploying marketing campaigns where you've got your really valuable bit of content, but you're not ramming them down, the, you know, you're not hitting with that form straight away. Build some trust at first, let them know that it's going to be valuable, you know, so, so I find one of the easiest things to convert people to is a webinar because the expectation is that there's an email registration. So it's not like fill in the form to download my PDF. You know, you know it's like you, we can download a PDF without filling in a form, right? But a webinar, we actually have to send you a calendar reminder and stuff like that. So if you can structure a webinar at the end of your funnel, you know, where you save some really good nuggets for that, that can work incredibly well. But ultimately, it's just establish value first and then ask them for their name. You know, if we do, it's like doing a Facebook campaign straight to a landing page with a form on it. Like the, the conversion is terrible because people are like, well, hang on. I, I was interested in the information, but I don't know you from Adam. Why would I want to tell you my name? Because I know the next thing I'm going to get is, you know, a load of emails or a phone call or, or something like that. So, you know, I think it's about that. The, the other thing is it's also about the tactics you use too, right? So, you know, um, you know I'd say last year, um, for us, for conversion was, was uh, the year of the exit intent pop-up, right? So you come to the page, we let you read it. So maybe it's a long form blog with loads of content in it. So we let you read it with no form. But then when you go to leave, we go, oh, wait a minute, before you leave, you might be interested in this amazing webinar, or you might be interested in a one-to-one -one chat, or you might want to watch this video, right? So, so you, you ungate the content, but you ask them a question as they leave to establish some value. That generated more leads for us in 2019 than the form on the page originally. You know, it's like this idea of you go into a shop, people don't leave you alone to look around, but when you try leave, they might go, oh, I know she didn't buy anything. I don't say that, but what they mean is, I know she didn't buy anything, but you took all the trouble to come here. Could you not find what you were looking for? It's the same principle on a website. This year, as you very well know, we're experimenting a lot with chatbots on landing pages, which again is a, and that the, you know, the results are looking positive, which is just try and get, try and get them engaged in something that's slightly different that captures their imagination. Yeah. I think, um, you know, I think what's harder as a digital agency, um, is that it used to be like you could buy campaigns. So people come to you, you know, clients would come to you and they'd say, Hey, can I get a campaign? Right? Like, can you, mm. you create me this piece of content and create me this landing page and, right? To get some ads around it and drive people there. Um, you know, what I'm, what I personally believe, and you tell me if I've, I'm off keel here, but is that agencies have to start getting more control over the, their, uh, a company's marketing, because essentially if you're just doing campaigns, it's going to be really, really hard, especially because we all know that you can create a campaign and it fails, right? I mean, it fails more times than it succeeds. Yeah. So, um, you know, what we're finding is, having a little bit more control so that we can do a lot of, a lot of things, right? A lot of different things 
so that we don't have to just be stuck in saying, okay, we have a Facebook ad, we have an Instagram ad. It's like, no, we need to be doing a Facebook ad, an Instagram ad, a LinkedIn ad. <laughs> and then we need to be doing the exit and 10 pop-up. We need to be creating a chat bot. We need to be promoting it through uh, this type of video. We need to be uh, promoting it through this type of creative. We need an animated GIF. So there's like, there's just all these like multiple things that like we literally have to have control over to have successful campaigns anymore as an agency. Yeah, and here's the thing, right? So, you know, if I'm your search agency and you come to me and say, we need to promote this thing, what's the, what's the answer I'm gonna give you? You need to do search-based marketing. If I'm your social media marketing agency and you come to me and say, we wanna promote this thing, what's the answer I'm gonna give you? You need social media marketing, right? Turkey doesn't vote for Christmas, right? I'm not gonna sit there if I do your social media and tell you, actually, no, you know what? Facebook's not so great for this, right? It's, no, Facebook's the answer. And I'll make the numbers work. And I'm scared by how many marketing managers actually don't want to get the sales results because what they want to do is promote, oh, we had 2 million impressions and our engagement rate was a high percentage and stuff like that. And it's, we can all play the numbers game, you know, but you know, for me, I think you're spot on, which is you can't be siloed in your marketing approach. You've got to find an agency that understands, right? So, so, you know, to start with, you've got to, you know, hire a digital agency or a marketing agency that understands selling right? That's the number one priority. If, you, if they don't know what cost per acquisition is, they don't know what your um, um, uh, sales conversion rate is from call to lead, if they don't know what your uh, uh, appointment to conversion rate opportunity is, if they don't know what your uh, uh, average customer value is, per, you know, if you're not looking at your marketing in that way, you'll never pick the right tactic. You know, we've got, take, take, um, oh, I won't mention the name, but we've got a very big blue customer, right? And their, their AUP, is between four hundred and fifty thousand dollars to two and a half thousand dollars because they're transitioning. Explain AUP their, for people. Oh, it's their, 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 you know, it's the average price that their the solution gets sold for, right? So you know they've got one solution that's half a million dollars and one solution that's two and a half thousand dollars. Well, you can't use the same marketing tactics for those two solutions, right? Because you know your cost per acquisition, you know, so so realistically, we're probably for the bigger solutions ninety thousand dollars up. It's probably. Ugh, you know, $1,200 an appointment, something like that. And then their sales team probably convert one in four, right? So you're somewhere between $4,000 and $5,000 per sale, okay? Now, if your product you're selling gross revenue is only $2,500 and your cost per customer is between four and $5,000, then you can't use that marketing approach to sell that solution. And I think fundamentally, if you don't have an agency that understands sales, then you're only going to be dealing with these fancy numbers, right? Nobody ever asks a shopkeeper, you know, how many people walked past his shop today? You know, nobody asks, really asks them how many people that walked past walked in or how many conversations you had, right? They say, how did you do today? You know, what did you sell? What do you know? So, you know, the bank's not interested in footfall outside your shop, right? So I think you've got to be looking at this integrated approach and it's integrated, but with a sales view. And I think this has to be the, the future of agencies. And everybody's talking about sales and marketing combining, right? Well, it's all the same process, but marketing should be the bit at the front, which is the one to many. Slowly marketing gets you down to one to less, one to less, one to less, and you get your marketing automation, which qualifies people. Then you might have your SDR, which should work for marketing, but might work for sales. Shame on you, right? But it should be a marketing end of, you know, that should be the human being at the end of the marketing pipeline. And then it goes, gets passed into a salesperson to, to close a deal and walk them through the door. So, I, is, it's, so it's the same thing. So I would agree and disagree. I agree with you. I think agencies obviously have to have the sales mindset, but I think a lot of the clients, they don't let you get that deep. In, you know, they're not letting you get that close to them um, unless you've been working with them for a while from, from my vantage point. And you know, the difference is you work with enterprise. I work with a lot of more startup, um, you know, low mid market. But I feel like, uh, one of the biggest struggles for, for us and what I see like for, from a future of social media standpoint is how many companies want to hire an agency just to get them leads, right? It's like, okay. But the problem is you can't build demand unless you build brand, right? So you know, the struggle is to say to some of these people to say, hey, the first four months of this relationship is we need to build your brand, right? That's how we're going to use social media. We're going to do a lot of stuff where we ask for absolutely nothing and we just give a ton of value away because the problem with your marketing and why nobody wants to do any business with you is because they don't know who you are because every time they see you, you're just begging them for something, right? Yeah. So, so I've like, 
from my vantage point, I'd love to hear your, your positioning on this, but there's um, a new, new wave of demand generation that's happening and it's, it's actually through the branding piece of using social media. Um, and, then, and then if you set up all the components, right, you know, your retargeting and your search and all this stuff um, and your ads and, you know, then, then you can get demand. But a lot of these companies, even these, some of these enterprise companies are just absolutely terrible at building brand in a way that wa- makes people want to drive and help you drive demand. Yeah, and there's two, there's two parts, you know, there's, there's two ways to do it, right? There's the, there's, and you can combine both, but there is, you know, there's the right way, which is somebody's got to know you. That depends on the customer, right? So, you know, um, I had a meeting with a really big brand this week and everybody knows them, they're a household name. So you don't, in that case, you don't really need to, but you've got, you've got to, like you said, establish value. And that could take six months within a given market to be seen as a value provider before you start asking for things. So you've got to provide value. You've also, I think, got to be able to um, um, create some authority for what you're saying. So, of course, the shortcut for that, uh, you know, and this was on one of your earlier podcasts, um, is in- using influencers, right? So, you know, if you don't have affinity with an audience, as an agency, and we do this a lot, right? We do so much analysis and we want to target this person and who else influences them and how can we work with them? And we use, you know, we use influencers you know, in the right way with a lot of our customers. Um, but you can use influencers to help lend you their affinity, right? So, you know, I got, you know, got right, wine right back, right? So, you know, why did we buy Acton as our marketing automation platform? Most, it was because it was you and a few influencers. It was people that we trusted, the external voices that said, actually, it's pretty good. You should check it out. And without that, you, we wouldn't have gotten a sales call because, we, you know, we we're already a user of Marketo. We we're already a user of Pardot. We didn't need another one. You know, what, you know, is it, is it, is it, is it kind of a me too? And of course you're always going to say, no, we're better. We're, you know, everybody loves themselves, right? The, you know, the truth in how good your content is, is when it hits a stranger, not when it's inside your company. Right. So, so, you know, so, so do they really care about your content and what you're saying? You know, so I think you're exactly right. I think you've got to make yourself known. I think the beauty of social marketing is that you can define audiences. You can use remarketing. You can qualify an audience on LinkedIn and then follow them to Facebook for conversion because that works really well. And, you know, so we can really cross track people to make sure that we're always providing the right positioning and value. And then you can add affinity to you or you can lend credence to what you're saying by using external parties saying, actually, it's pretty good you know, I mean, uh, and them talking in their channels. A lot of our clients, um, I think on both sides, as we talk about this, they get stuck in this pool where they built, maybe build an audience, whether they're enterprise, mid-market, startup, doesn't matter, but it's the same people that engage and it's the same people that fill out the form. It's the same people that in, yeah. attend the event. So it's like, the only way that you get out of that is that you go, you go steal somebody else's audience that you want, right? And when I yeah. say steal, I say that if you do it correctly, you're, you're steal, they're letting you steal it, right? It, whether that's you're paying them to steal it or you're just gonna get that, you know, a lot of these people like um, that are maybe an, an expert in a topic or they've written a book about it or something. I mean, they'll come on as long as they know that you're gonna use your money and your paid media to promote them and, and maybe drive sales to their book or whatever, you know, whatever their influence is and that they're looking to get out of it too. So I think as an agency from a social media perspective, I think you and I have, we have these talks all the time is brands have to quit trying to have their CEO or their CMO talk with their VP of marketing in a webinar, right? Nobody cares. Like we don't, they don't care. It's like, you got to go find those authorities and really partner with doing collaborative content. And that's how you got to use social media anymore. I mean, really to get any traction as a brand, you have to start to incorporate the people that already have an audience. Yeah, you just got to up your game, right? I mean, it's like, you know, and you, you know, you this from like when you run a social ad, right? So you used to be able to just do a very plain image type stuff and it, and it worked, you know, because not, you know, you didn't need to be quite different. But now if something's not animated, if it's not a GIF, it's not video, if the video's not got text on it, you know what I mean? If you're not upping your game. So, you know, it's content and getting good content isn't just the conversion piece. It's the when you start to tell the story all the way out there in whatever channel you're using. So people, you know, are having to reallocate budget from making big assets and then just assuming everybody's going to want to come to them to actually putting more at the sharp end. So, you know, 
when we've got an asset, we might have an ad set of 50 different ads for it that we're testing. You know, there's like different shapes of videos, there's different colors, there's like text on it, there's plain text, you know what I mean? So, it's, so you know, never before I think have we had to invest so much in just getting somebody to come to the funnel. Because if not, what you're describing is exactly true. It'll be your fans that come, but it's your fans that are already in your funnel. It's your fans that have already got a, a lead score. They're stuck in the middle. You know, they've not progressed to buy because they might not even be in the market to buy. They might just be using you as a research tool, right? Because most digital funnels are very dumb, right? Anybody, anybody can come in the top and work their way through it, you know? So I think it's an important consideration that people realize that when you are planning your budgets, you've got to shift some of it to the front end, you know, more than you ever did before. That also applies to language as well. It applies to regional variances. So we see like, well, how do you describe something in this state versus that state, right? You know, um, we're in the UK and a lot of our clients are American. So we get a lot of American content. Most of it we have to localize. And it seems funny to say you localize American content to English content when we both mostly speak the same language. Well, obviously we speak the Queen's English. And yeah, you, you, guys speak speak some, you guys have, you guys spell stuff weird, but other than um, that, yeah. But even, even like videos, right? So if we get a video supplied and it's a voiceover and it's got an American accent, with accent we have to re-record it with an English accent on it. And it's, you know, you've got to put the effort in to, to show people that the journey's worth it. Their click is worth it. And I think that brings us back to the beginning is you've just got to work harder for their trust and you've got to work harder for their click. And if you're not working harder, your click's becoming a lot more expensive. I mean, we're still getting really great. I mean, we're getting, when, I tell, when I tell some of our customers what we're doing, you know, what our um, uh, acquisition cost is for webinars across some of our projects, particularly some of the exciting ones that you work in, because you know, we're big enterprises stuff and you've got some really sexy brands, right? So fixing real complicated problems with a really great cloud solution, right? So sometimes, that hits a real sweet spot. But, you know, we, we can be getting people on a webinar for, you know, sub $5 a person, right? But, yeah. you know, you relate that to come here, the CEO of this big IT brand talking, you know, it could be $100 per webinar sign up, you know, so the gulf is huge. So I think you can still get, you can squeeze good leads out of existing social media platforms, you know, and I, you know, I don't believe in telling people get off Facebook, get off Twitter, get off LinkedIn, yeah, right? So I'm a marketeer, right? Like, I watched that Netflix great hack. Shame to admit it. I watched that Netflix great hack thinking, geniuses. Right? <laughs> you know, I, I literally sat with my wife and she was appalled. She was like, oh my God, well, this is appalling. You know, and I'm like, oh my God, this is brilliant. These guys were just, they, that's good marketing, right? Because they broke it down to a, an individual level and what moved you and they gave you an ad that talk to you and they only bothered talking to people that they knew could convert, right? Not everybody, they, they use social to target exactly the right person at the right time with the right message. They worked hard for that. Now, of course, there was some unethical stuff, there was data they should have deleted. So that bit, of course, was completely wrong. You know, using fake news to convince people, that was completely wrong. But the, but the brain as to how to work social, I was like, you know, Brilliant. The emotional, Brilliant. yeah, they played out, you know, they talk about the emotional and we don't want to, we don't want to go down that black hole because you guys, you and I will be here forever. But um, <laughs> one of the things I, I think that you brought up and I think is funny is that I, I hear a lot of people say webinars are dead and I laugh at that because we just had a, we have a client right now that, that did one email and promoted it on social and has 2,500 signups for the web, a webinar, right? Like, I mean, it's insane, right? Um, and what I find is that social media with the right that's people, one webinar right one webinar yeah 2500 yeah. people 2500 people that signed up and a thousand of those contacts of the 2500 were new people and here's what's I hope funny you're doing that, that on a cost i'd be doing that on a cost per lead basis jack i'm just saying oh cost per lead we put i mean granted this you know uh you don't need to tell us but i'm saying that customer has you know they have they have major influence right this is where social influence comes in because yeah. they and then they yeah. had another influencer on the, the, the thing and you know that's topics. Great fantastic yeah, that's but i think i think the major point there is that what we find is actually webinars drive the highest quality lead at the lowest cost if they're done right and mm -hmm. and and we have numbers that will prove that you know they have huge conversion rates especially when it comes to building opportunity and pipeline like there's nothing nothing that beats them if you do the right webinar i mean I, no, I and the content and the content that comes from webinars right so you've got great content for do marketing you've got all the influence and on the back end you can make eBooks from the content that was in the webinar. You can write blogs, you know, so that webinar can live on, you know, in perpetuity, right? You know, it's, um, 
I, you know, and that's, I agree with you. I think the thing is people say webinars don't work because they don't work for them. And what that means is people don't care to give up the time to listen to the same old crap, right? That's, that's the truth of it. So it's not, don't blame the medium, blame the message, right? And it's, so if, if webinars are stopping working for you, you've just got the wrong people advising you about what your prospects care about. And that's where it all starts. And that's another advantage of social today is that you can apply the right analytics brain to understand what do they really care about today? What's the problem that they're facing today? And let's, how can we talk to that problem? You know, so I think there's a lot of life in the old social platforms to, you know, I think, I think they're, you know, I mean, we're, we're big fans, aren't we? Right. And I'm, I'm a big fan of Facebook for corporate too, for conversion. You know, you might not, you might not find them on Facebook. You might find them somewhere else like LinkedIn, but Facebook is the best platform for converting today. It really is. So, you know, I, I think it's, I, I was going to say, um, one of the things and tying this back to what the future of digital agencies and, you know, companies look like and what that relationship looks like from a social media perspective is I think good agencies understand how to hack content for their clients. Right. Yeah. So one of the things I think we, we've really adapted very well uh, on both sides of the pond is we take a webinar and then we make three square video clips out of that. We take a, a quote out of that. And then that, we that webinar will live on forever, right? That will be an, mm -hmm. we'll flip that into an on-demand webinar and we'll use all the pieces of content. So I think what clients are really looking for is like, how do you, how do you creatively show us how to make something without taking a ton of our employees time, right? And, and not having to ask us for a huge budget. I think that's what the future of social media mm. looks like for digital agencies is how do you give your clients a structure of how they can not only do demand gen, but now they have all these good pieces of content that will actually get engagement on all their social platforms. Because I think it's less about the medium. And I, I wanna, I'm going to transition into this because I know we, we only have a few minutes left. But you know, now is like as a digital agency, and I think you've taken on this project as the CMO for how to is as an agency, we also have to start looking at this early adopter piece of it, right? Because we know that these platforms at some point, like these giants, like MySpace, you know, went down and I'm, I'm not too sure Facebook will ever be the MySpace, but you know, you know that these, these platforms are going to evolve. And what we have to be careful of is to bet on the right horses, right? Because we can't get, we, we can't, we can't get, we can't go spend our clients at tons of money on different platforms without knowing no. that they have something there, right? They have legs. Yeah. So tell us about how do, and you know how the different this looks for marketers from this platform's point of view. Yeah, so and I want to cover it from both ends. I want to talk about it from a content point of view and also from an advertising point of view, right? So, um, and it's fair to say that I bugged them for about six months to let me work for them, right? And there's a reason for that. You know, um, I love creation. You know, I love working with you. I love working with with Pete, our head in the UK. You know, that looks after Europe. You know. Um, and I'm, you know, I, I'm in a position where you guys, you know, you guys have got it right. So, you know, but my, my role has always been to look two years down the line or a year down the line. And that's why as an agency, we were one of the first people to adopt social marketing in the UK. That's why we were one of the first agencies to adopt marketing automation, you know, in the UK and uh, you were first agencies to bring social selling into the UK because we were, we had the breathing space to look at what's coming in the future. Now, Here's the problem with Facebook, right? Now, people will argue they're listening, right? They are listening. They admitted it, right? They admit, they listen. You've got Messenger on your phone, they listen to you talking, right? So, so you could have an attitude on whether that's good or bad, right? Because some people can say, well, if they're listening, they can provide a better service and all that kind of stuff. Same as your club card when you go shopping, right? They, you, know, you know they're just you know, analyzing you. So you know, there's, 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 there's that angle which is less important. You know, there's a movement, you know, um, there's a movement for it, but it's not such a big issue. The big issue is nobody's joining Facebook. That's the problem, right? So Facebook has a big load of users. Facebook numbers going down. Time of people on Facebook is going down. The way they keep their numbers going up for shareholders is through acquisition, right? It's not through getting people into Facebook. They buy Instagram, they buy WhatsApp, right? And they'll keep buying up people that have got audiences and trying to somehow roll that technology in. So the Gen Zers and the younger millennials have not been joining Facebook. When you and I found Facebook, it was cool, right? It was cool, like we're on Facebook, right? Now, well, I don't know, I'm a middle-aged man, right? So is my son gonna wanna hang out with me on Facebook? Of course he's not, right? So one of the problems has been, you know, one of the problems with these platforms is just people not joining. The other thing is that there's, the con Facebook is a pay-to-play, right? So if you're a creator, 
and you want to build a channel on Facebook, you can't do anything organic now. So, you know, you attract, you know, for you to attract people to watch your content, to watch your podcast, right? You have to boost those posts. Well, the more successful you are in getting followers, the more expensive it is to get those people that you've paid to acquire to watch your content, which makes no logical sense too, right? So what's coming, and there's no question about this, is that blockchain is going to revolutionize most industries. In fact, everything we are now. And most people will see the passive benefit, the same as the internet, right? I don't need to know how Amazon works to be able to order something and it arrive at home the next day, right? It just works, right? So what the internet did for speed of communications, blockchain will do for the speed of money and transactions. So blockchain is coming. And the benefits that brings to social media is inherent privacy. So all of your data is stored in your own smart contract. So the project we're talking about now is specifically is how do, which is this new social media platform born in the blockchain. So all of your data stored in a smart contract. So if you want to share that with advertisers, it's your choice. Now the beauty is it's fair. So that means if the platform is getting ad revenue derived from you sharing your data, you get a share of that money. So that's where the token comes in. So I actually passively earn money just by allowing advertising to happen. Now for content creators, you can host your content on this. So let's say you're a vlogger or you write blogs or you write books or whatever it is you do. And you have a show, you, you have a podcast, yeah. a show. Yeah, you, know? you have a podcast, a show. You can launch your content in Howdo and you can receive transaction-free tips. So if somebody watches you and goes, oh, wow, that was good. Oh, that was really helpful. I'll tip you 10 you do's, right? Well, those 10 you do's, they probably earn through passive advertising, so it didn't cost them anything, but they've got real world value. So as a creator, you'll be able to cash out your you do earnings you know, at any time. It's your money, you get it immediately. There's also subscription channels and paywall content where the creator gets 95% of the money. So there's only a 5% transaction fee for that. And on advertising, the minimum amount a creator would get if they allow advertising on their channel. So let's say you had Jack's channel and you turned advertising on, the minimum you would get would be 60%. Now, based on how big and popular you get, you might get up to 80% of that ad revenue. So we've got a decentralized social media platform where the users control their own data and their privacy. They get rewarded if they share it, where content creators can put content on and they get the most money in every scenario. Now, how do might not crack it? I think it will. And that's why I kind of, you know, I was bugging the team saying, let me work with you, started as an advisor, you know, and they said, well, actually, well, why don't you come and join the team more formally and kind of help us do our raise and help us, you know, help us get our users signed up and stuff like that. Now, what I'm also doing because I'm a marketeer is um, I'm working on the back end with the team to do the ad engine. So one of the things we're going to do on the ad engine, which you would expect, I want to do something a bit different, is I'm reinstigating what was my favorite tactic in the past, which was cost per lead. So at the moment, you do a Facebook campaign or a Twitter campaign, a LinkedIn campaign, you use Facebook cards, LinkedIn, you're paying CPM, CPE, or CPC, right? But how much it actually costs to capture a name is variable. And that, that's variable based on a lot of things, right? So one of the things we're going to be launching early next year in our ad engine is the capability for you to pay a fixed price for a name. So if you're doing a webinar and you say, I will pay up to $5 per webinar attendee, that's what you pay. You don't pay a dollar a click and hope that one in five fills in the form and registers. So from an now, ad Facebook, perspective- Well, just to be fair, Facebook will let you do this, but um, you could put in $5, but the, you might not get it for the $5. No. So yeah, what you're you, saying oh, yeah, is yeah. you're going to get, you're going to actually, if, you, if we say we're going to, you, if you say it's $15, we're going to give you that, we're going to give you a, the lead for $15. Yeah. And if, and if the leads come from your channels and advertise as a, as a channel owner, you'll get 60% of that $5 for everybody that attends this other person's webinar. Isn't that fair, right? But it's because it's new technology. It's not like a big server that we're having to maintain. You know, our blockchain is effectively thousands of servers that are run by the community, which are our nodes and our super nodes. So we can, we can run a social platform incredibly efficient in this way. So, you know, my attraction to Howdo was, I think, great team, uh, a great platform, uh, great signups already, you know, uh, really exciting, not unique, you know, in the sense of there will be other blockchain projects coming. But of course, as we know, I'm on, you know, Pinterest, Tumblr, Medium, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, right? So it, it, nobody's going to pick, there's not going to be one that wins them all. But 
I think how do you capture people's imaginations? Because I think it will attract creators. And we've got people that have tried to set up a YouTube channel recently, can't earn any money because unless you've been on there for years and got millions of followers already, it's so hard to grow. Well, you'd have to pay, you essentially, now. you essentially have to pay to build an audience. So by the time you've paid to build the audience that's big enough, you know what I mean? Unless you're just like some overnight, you know, uh, viral sensation, which is super rare anymore. But it's, I agree with you. It's like, at some point, I think, especially these content creators, they're moving away from Facebook. They're moving away. You know, they, the, I don't know what they're doing on LinkedIn because they're not making any money on LinkedIn. No. I think they're just no, no, wasting, no, no. wasting their time. But that's another. Uh, they're getting statement. a job. That's why yeah. they're on there. Yeah, so if somebody like, comes and looks at them, they go, you're very employable. Yeah. The reason to put content on LinkedIn, no other reason. But they have these content creators that are like YouTubers now. It doesn't make any sense to me, but I, I still haven't figured that out. But <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, there's got to be a platform you know, especially for the new way of the gaming, all this gaming stuff that's coming up, that's just absolutely taking over all the, you know, taking over your kid. It's going to take over your and you and I's kids' lives, right? And you know what? <laughs> My mom said to me, nothing will ever come of learning to play FIFA on your PlayStation, right? She said that. And look now, there are kids earning millions, millions. of pounds a year off the back of it. Now, so gaming's an interesting one, right? So the number one, the number one platform for streaming gaming, which you can set up payments on, is a, is a platform called Twitch. Um, was bought recently for a billion dollars, right? Well, last, you know, was bought last year for a billion dollars. Twitch take 50% of your money and they pay you, I believe, 60 days later, I'm being told by Twitchers, right? So they're taking half your money, which that's just unfair. But it's because they're the only platform in town. So how do offers picture in picture streaming and you can give it away for free and I'll let people tip you. We get nothing as a platform if people tip you. 100% of that is in your wallet. The exciting thing, which we're about to announce, this is a bit of a preview, but the exciting thing we're about to announce is, is a, a how do Visa card. So the, the deal is done. We're just working out how we build it into the wallet. But what will happen is you'll be able to convert your earnings straight to local currency in your app wallet. And then you'll have a corresponding Visa card that you can walk to the cash point and withdraw the cash, or you can go spend it at Starbucks or whatever. So imagine that as a creator, and that's your job, right? You know, I'm putting out videos. You know, I'm, I'm vlogging, I'm giving out tips, I'm running a subscription channel, I'm running a chat forum for people. Whatever my skill is, whether it's makeup or hairdressing or playing Fortnite or Apex Legends or giving tips on social marketing or trading, or whatever it is, right? So imagine you can, you know, you can monetize all of that and spend it immediately. Well, there's nothing that can do that. And, you know, obviously Facebook have announced their Zuckbucks uh, Libra token, right? But yep. that's just that's just a stable money. That's not, you know, that's not, you know, that it's a blockchain without a block and without chains. So there's a big debate about whether it is real cryptocurrency or not, and there's a big debate about whether countries will let them do it. But but that's about that's so they can enable you to use Facebook to pay for things, so they can monitor what you're paying for as yeah, well as that's everything. A, so that's, that's a bit scary. It, yeah. Well, I think I think it. What a lot of people don't understand is that when they're on a social platform, just like Facebook, for example, the people that they're following have to spend tons of time and tons of money creating content that keeps them engaged. So essentially, it's the creators who actually make Facebook all the money. It's not Facebook. Facebook no. just gives them the platform to be able to do it. And then, you know, they just monopolized it. And then who gets screwed is all these people that actually create the content that keeps Facebook in business. And yeah. it's kind of a oh, and, his, and, it, and you know, and it's not, we're talking about Facebook. It's not just Facebook, yeah, right? Yeah, so all of them. I, was, I was talking to an author this week about Amazon's uh, e-publishing into Kindle, right? So you can self-publish, book never needs to be printed, and you can publish it out to Kindle. You get pennies per people that download your book. It literally is pennies. Um, so they're creaming on the ad revenue because people are in there. They're selling devices, but off your content, they're getting pennies. And it's because well, how else? Well, how else do you monetize your book, right? So within something like how do you be able to say, okay, it's two pound of that, two pound a book, it appears in your digital store, it's frictionally. Now on that one, which is a paywall, we'd get 5% of the transaction because we've got to pay the bill somewhere, right? And I'm not cheap, just telling you. <laughs> so um, we've got to pay the bill somewhere, but you know, it gives you a chance of how to do it. So, it is, so it's exciting for me because you know, it's got, you know, us at the heart of it. So I think back to our point about digital agencies, I think in social media, I, n nobody's saying come off Facebook, right? Facebook's dead, go to, you know, nobody's remotely saying that. And in fact, the new platforms like Howdo, we're saying, please 
keep your audience on Facebook, but when you've got content and you want to monetize your content, don't put your video on Facebook, send them over to Howdo where you can monetize it, right? So same for Twitter, you know, all those kind of things. So, so we want Facebook to be the journey like Google where they've discovered something, but when they consume it, consume it somewhere where you control it and you get paid, not they get paid. So I think we will start to see this seismic shift, you know, and, and I think there is this movement about people owning their own data too, but let's see, let's see whether people care or whether they just want convenience. That's the whole debate there, right? But I think as a, as a social media marketing people, we need to look at what's coming next. We've got to be showing customers the way. Now imagine you're the first, you're the first social media expert to launch a show and channel on how to, right? It's a bit like YouTube, right? Everybody wants to be PewDiePie, don't they? But he put in so much effort at the beginning for no money to be where he is now, right? You can't do that today on Facebook. You cannot put the effort in that he put in and get the same results. It's, it's physically impossible, right? It's impossible. Um, unless you are talking, unless you're a young pigtail girl talking about climate change, right? In which case, your YouTube channel will be flying. But that's, that's a sensation that isn't this, right? So that's not the norm. So that's the your overnight. Is, that's your overnight. Else. It's your random overnight success uh, story of finding the right message to the right people and it just went viral. But I mean, that's, there's no, especially for brands as an agency, that just doesn't happen anymore. Like there's you know, too much tactical stuff, but as an agency, we have to be looking at something like this and saying, okay, how could we use this platform um, and get our brands on as an early adopter so that we can get them pennies on the dollar. But we have to be smart about it too, right? Is because, you know, it's just like some of these other platforms, uh, you know, they just, they're fly by night, like Snapchat. I yeah. And you, that. and you might be, I mean, yeah. How you, how marketers use Snapchat, like really with no call to actions is it anyway, but you know, but there's a part there to build a brand. But the thing is about, it's all about mixing, right? So, you know, if you're, if you're hundred percent all in on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, that's a little bit wrong. Maybe you should be 90% all in on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn, and 10% on testing new things, right? So if you haven't tr tried Reddit, test Reddit. If you haven't tried blogging out on Medium, try Medium, right? I mean, Tumblr, not so much at the moment, but Reddit's had a real renaissance. So there are even existing platforms that have been around for ages that you should be saying, right, well, let's just try somewhere else, right? You know, Reddit's amazing for organic. Advertising is tough on there because there are, a cynical bunch on Reddit, right? But, but you should try it, right? You know, go look, is there a community there? Do they talk about the problems that our, my client fixes? We should try it. But then also you should have a portion, which is this experimental new thing, right? So where should we be the first to set up a new, a new channel? Can we get people there? If we can get people there, what do they do? So, so I agree. I think you just got to always be looking, you know, God forbid the day, right? When as an agency, you walk into a room and your customer says to you, oh, I've heard about this new thing. What do you think? And you don't know what it is. Exactly. You know, that's the death of an agency because you're like, oh, yeah, we got a bit complacent, didn't we? Oh, no, we just do Facebook for you. You know what I mean? The minute that happens, you lose all trust because you've got to be leading the customer and we've got to take problems away from them. They shouldn't have to be researching what the next big thing is and forming an opinion on it. We should be saying, look, we've done the research. This is our opinion. This is our reasoning. This is what we think. What do you think, right? You know, and then we have to, and then we have to be honest and say we can't promise you anything, right? I mean, like, um, you know, I see all the, a lot of agencies, you know, they claim in their ads like, oh, we're gonna do this. It's like, but if it's a new platform, like, we are completely upfront and honest and saying, listen, let this is taking a gamble, but I th we think it's worth it. So I think we're gonna end there because I know that you've got. Uh, You've got nowhere to go. But thanks I for do. But no, but mate, this has been, this has been fantastic. And I think, you know, um, God bless you, helping spread the message. Back to reciprocity, right? So if there are digital agencies that want to learn about this stuff and want to get engaged and, you know, want to either reach out to me to get their customers early on to how do and get them there or talk to you about stuff, we give this stuff away, right, all the time, don't we? So we are not, we're not insular. There's, there's, we just want to try and kind of spread the word for good, effective marketing that, that gives you know marketing a good name in customers and that's not like it's not got a bad name but we've just got to keep moving right and that's what that's what i think we've been really good at doing is just just keeping moving and always looking for the next thing and always driving revenue and always surprising customers and you know always getting cut through and i do feel like social media is kind of at this tipping point where all the old things you did that always got you results are now starting to stop working or they're working but they're getting increasingly expensive. So when that starts to happen, you better be looking for what the next alternative is. So, so you know, where can people reach work. out to you, Jason? 
So I'm on Twitter. I'm at uh, uh, Jason Creation on Twitter. Uh, I am. Uh, you can email me. So I'm just Jason at creationagency.com. Uh, if you want to email me my howdo capacity, I'm uh, JDS at howdo.io. Uh, you can also join our howdo Telegram. So if you want to engage with me every day. I've got a huge community in there, over 20,000 people in our community. So come find me on Telegram. Again, I'm just Jason Creation on Telegram, same as Twitter, keep it nice and consistent. Uh, and if you just search how do in Telegram, you'll find our groups. So you can come in there, ask, talk about what it's about. You can be part of our beta testing program if you want. So, you know, we've got a great community of testers that are in there every day, trying the different features out. Like, so Based on feedback, we just launched YouTube Sync, so you can synchronize your how-to channel to your YouTube channel. So all of these things have actually come out of the community. So if you want to be part of something new and you want to be in there testing and help shape what it's going to be, just come find me on Twitter or come, come find me on the Telegram, uh, you know, and we'll get you engaged and kind of get you, uh, get you part of the community. But it's going to be an exciting, it's going to be an exciting few years because new stuff is going to come too, right? So you know, we can't stop at this. There's going to be something else coming out. So yeah, we need to keep our eyes wide open. Beautiful. Well, thank you, Jason. I'm sure uh, we had. A, I'm sure there's a lot of things out of this conversation that if anybody wants to reach out to me too, I'm down to uh, give you our experience. So, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Business Banter.